Okay, so this animation shows a simple tree graphic being revealed. So the animation here isn't on objects moving around so much as objects being revealed over time. There's a lot of ways you could do this. You could do this with masks or by manually manually painting on brush strokes and using your blend modes and things like that. But there is a very simple way uh, through the use of the stroke effect combined with masks uh, to get this kind of revealing to happen. So if I select the trunk here, for example, and uh, you'll see that the stroke effect has been applied and down at the bottom you'll see that the paint style has been set to reveal original image. That's what turns a standard kind of colored stroke that you can see here into more of a kind of progressively compositing and revealing the leaf. Okay, so to 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 draw to get the movement, you just um, set it back to the original, and you 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 time it, and and then you just switch that at the end, and that gives you the effect. Okay, so I'm going to um, cover just the revealing of the branches. I'm not going to cover the leaves. They're just a kind of a finishing touch for the animation. They are comprised of a single um, leaf precomp that just has a simple little kind of bounce animation there, a little bit of overshoot, and then that has been dragged out and duplicated and rearranged, resized and rotated. So you have all the information and the other basic animation videos to do that, and you can use your own kind of eye then to, to line them up. I'm going to start with a uh, kind of starter here with just the three parts of the, the tree branch, we'll call it. And you'll see on the, the trunk, I've drawn a simple mask up like a spine through the, the trunk of the tree. And now I'm going to drag the stroke effect down and I'm going to change its color from white to red so we can see it a little bit better. And I need it to cover the entire uh, part of the graphic, the trunk, so I need to increase the brush size as well, kind of fatten it up so that it definitely covers the entire width of that. Now to make it move you want to either um, keyframe its start or its end. Now it's quite often it's the end that you'll you'll do because when you bring the end back to the start by bringing the end from 100% back to 0% you get to start something from a base and move it outwards. Now I could do it the opposite direction if I brought the start from 0 to 100. Okay so it just depends on which direction you want it to go in this case, I'm going to just be animating the end. So on the first frame, I'm going to keyframe the end property and I'm going to change it to zero. When I click out, you'll see the stroke disappears because it has been brought back down to the very start. Uh, I'm going to go out two seconds to dot enter and I'm going to change that back to 100. I'm going to zoom in my timeline there so I can get a bit of a better idea. Now when you want to see the effect you just hit the E key to, or you can toggle it open but the E key will just pull open the effects and you can pull that down there you'll see that the end property has two keyframes so I could if I wanted to I could also give that a bit of timing with an easy ease in and it will come up like that. Okay so once the movement has been created and you know that the, the stroke covers the width you just change that to reveal original image and then you get that. Now obviously it doesn't make sense now because the two branches are kind of hanging there in the air. So I need to reveal them in time so that for example when this the animation gets to this part this is allowed to grow and when the animation gets to this part that's allowed to grow. Now I need to set up some sort of an indicator for my timing here and the best way to do that is to use markers. So I'm going to pull that back to where I want this to start growing and on the numeric keypad, I'm going to hit the asterisk. Make sure none of my layers are selected. Ooh, I didn't do that properly. Okay. Try that again. So you can see the marker is up here. It's not stuck to a layer. Now I'm going to go up to the next part where the next one can grow. And I'm going to do the same thing. And there I have two um, markers. Okay. Now, just zoom in there. Okay. So on this part, I'm going to close that and I'm going to select the layer. I'm going to draw 
a mask. And I'm going to apply the stroke effect. Change it to red. Fatten it up like I did with the last one. And I'm going to start its animation from this part, the timeline. So I'll go to the end property, same as before. Hit zero. And then, uh, let's see now. Change that to reveal original image. Here we go. So at about here, I want it to stop growing. So that's now looking good. Okay. So up here, the second marker, go to the last branch. Same thing. Draw a mask. Just line up a bit better. And drag down the stroke. Okay. So I'll just go through those steps. Now, it doesn't have to be red. In fact, you know, that was just to illustrate. Uh, the, the stroke itself. It can be any color. You could leave it white if you want. It's just a bit hard to see against a white background. Okay, so pull that out there and same steps as before. End, start at zero, so it comes back to the start. And then bring it out. Bring that back to 100. Set it to reveal original image. Okay, so I pull the playhead through. You'll see it does what I want it to do. OK, so that is how you go about using the stroke effect uh, to reveal things.